Conventionally speaking, aggro is a fairly straightforward archetype. Your opponent is at a life total. The rules of the game say you need to turn that life total to zero. You try to do so, as quickly as possible. Common ways of doing this consist of direct damage, small creatures, large creatures rushed out quickly, and so forth. Red deck wins is instructive here. A mixture of burn smells and small creatures means that the aggro player will try to deal as much creature damage as possible early, and then hope that they can run the deck to the finish line with burn. In a 20 health format, this is straightforward and makes sense. What about in Commander, though? That 120 health format we all know and love. A mere 39 lightning bolts are needed, presuming each player gotshots themselves with a land. Or 39 swings with a Delver of Secrets, if you prefer. Or 13 swings with an elite squad of 3 Delvers of Secret. Perplexing. The answer is that it doesn't work. The fact that EDH is a 40 life format is a pain point for our hypothetical red deck winner. With this in mind, I think an instructive exercise is to think about what 40 life really means. First of all, life pay is so much less punishing. Fetches and shocks? Easy. Phyrexian mana symbols? Close enough to free. Paying one life for one card? An even more delicious bargain than usual. These effects, worthwhile but noticeably painful in a 20 health format, are now nearly painless. Secondly, blocking isn't as necessary. Decks are empowered to constantly use tap abilities, to swing in for value with a Biden of Thassa effect, and to eat 5-10 to 10 damage hits rather than blocking with an important creature. They're also empowered to spend their early turns throwing down snowball-y value cards rather than committing much to board. So, with that stuff in mind, what happens if you remove that extra health and take away those things? Suddenly, that Phyrexian Arena is a liability. That Dismember is close to regaining its status as a 3-mana black card. Your commander might need to be a blocker if you didn't add enough creatures to your deck, and trading is the best case scenario. Spending a turn playing setup cards for an approaching big turn goes from an exciting proposition to a terrifying one, when you might be the one to get knocked out if you skimp on blockers. Your hands are tied, your knees are quivering, and your deck was decidedly not built for this situation. To me, this is the best starting point for looking at EDH aggro. Your goal doesn't start and end with reducing your opponent's life total to zero, like it generally does in 20 health 1v1 formats, because cutting out a large chunk of an opponent's life total is helpful in its own right. My mantra in a game where somebody has a deck that is concerning and unpredictable, but not necessarily totally dominant, is that they should be at 15 life. When somebody is at 15 life, they have to play much more conservatively. Having safe setup turns isn't a given, and they're generally one round of attacks away from death if they start doing concerning things. Going forward, I'm going to refer to this concept as aggro ideology. This is not the beginning and the end of what aggro means in EDH, but simply a phrase I use to gesture at the benefits of having opponents who are scared about their life total. If I had to pick out a second feature of the commander format that's important for aggro decks, it's commander damage. If your commander deals 21 combat damage to an opponent, they lose. This means that if your deck is commander based, you're playing a 21 health format instead of the much more challenging 40 health format. Neat. Now, aggro ideology and commander damage aren't mutually exclusive, nor do you need both. For a summary of what decks care about what things, this is a handy diagram. Outside the circles, we have decks that lose. There may be effective aggro decks that don't use commander damage and don't take advantage of disrupted opponents, but they are exceedingly rare. On the right here, we have pure Voltron, this is a deck that plays a commander, buffs it and protects it through a combination of other cards, and kills players very quickly in large bursts of damage. The higher level an aggro list is, the more Voltron-y it will be, generally speaking. In the middle here is Pseudo-Voltron. These decks will commonly utilize commander damage to win, but will often have other forms of damage as well. This gives the deck multiple win plans, as well as allowing for both focused kills and general table beatdown, which may have different use cases depending on what you're playing against. The last type of deck here is Disruptive Aggro. This is a deck that fully commits to the plan of making its opponents uncomfortable. You'll commonly see lots of cards that damage multiple opponents, often paired with some form of stacks. I've included links to examples of each of these types of decks in the description. Now that I've laid out a conceptual foundation for aggro, let's talk about the specific goals and challenges that are important within a game. For a creature-based aggro deck, the basic idea is simple. You want creatures on board, 
and you want them to connect with your opponent's life totals. To connect with life totals, you need to get past blockers. The most common way of going about this is evasion, either innately on the aggressive creatures, or applied through equipments or cards such as Wonder. An alternative method is eliminating those blockers, but this is much less common. One example is a budget Rakdos discard deck I built that runs Malfagor as the commander, mostly as a way of clearing out blockers. Maintaining creatures on board is a separate challenge, with the roadblock there usually being board wipes. There's no one foolproof solution to this, but here are some potential workarounds. For one, be faster than the deck with the board wipes, and target them first. This is likely the preferred method for higher power Voltron decks. Alternatively, run protection spells. Permanent base is preferable for an aggro deck, with Selfless Spirit being the absolute gold standard if you're running white. You can also run instants that protect your creatures, or even counter spells, but keep in mind that holding up mana will make your deck less mana efficient unless you have treasures, or unless you have creatures with flash. As a third option, run Blood Artist effects. This is my preferred strategy when playing black, as it ties in beautifully with our aggro ideology. The point about outrunning board wipes ties into a broader point about the speed of a deck. Speed and resilience are factors that need to be considered. A deck that can outrun most combos and kill midrange before it stabilizes might not need much in the way of counterplays or resistance to obstacles, but a slower deck might want a lot more of these things. However, putting those things in a deck also tends to slow it down more, so it's a balancing act. My Liesa Hate Bears deck is a good example of a slower, more resilient aggro deck that is constantly chewing on life totals, but whose reliably brutal commander and high density of stacks I mean it doesn't necessarily need to win super early. Past the basics, a key skill you'll want to develop is target prioritization. If your deck prefers to kill one player at a time, you need to pick a player to focus, and picking wrong might lose you the game. Primary targets that come to mind are players who pay a lot of life, and players who have especially strong ways to shut you down, but it's definitely a vibes based thing, and when in doubt you can just attack the opponent you're most afraid of. A final challenge I'll mention is that, at some tables, aggro is considered rude in some capacity. This is especially common in pods populated with fiddly midrange decks, where knocking out a player early means they'll spend upwards of an hour sitting on the sidelines. These environments are not my preferred one to play in, but ultimately they simply stem from the fact that EDH is a social game played in a lot of different ways. The Kitty Gloves fiddly version of it is one way it's played, but you can certainly try to smack a little variety into your playgroup with a beatdown deck.